everybody, my name is Caitlin. If we haven't already met, thank you so much for being here today. Um, welcome to your 75 minute restorative yoga practice. So just really quick before we begin the practice, in case this is anybody's first time doing restorative yoga specifically, throughout the 75 minute practice, we'll do a number of poses, give or take five to six, just depending on how long the holds end up being. Generally, they will range about five to seven minutes. Sometimes it will run a little bit shorter, sometimes a little bit longer, but we use all of our lovely props so that the length of time is sustainable, it's enjoyable, and super relaxing. So with that, um, let's get started in supported Shavasana. So let's take a blanket first. Taking your single blanket, put that at the back edge of your yoga mat. I like to do a double fold, that way head is a little bit higher than your heart. And then you'll take your bolster or your pillow, whatever it is that you're using at home. Take your bolster out in front of you and you will put that to the width of your space. This will support a bend in your knees. The second blanket, which I would always elect to use, is for added weight and warmth. And that will help you to feel more calm and relaxed in the postures as we take on the holds. You anchor into the sitting bones, drape the legs over top of the bolster. You want to be sure that your heels touch down onto the mat and your feet are about hips width distance. You don't have to point or flex the feet, just allow natural flexion to move through the ankles. Adjust the blanket first that's over top of the body so that it's comfortable. And second, adjusting the blanket that you have underneath the neck and the head. If it doesn't naturally happen, I do like to offer a self-assist for the cervical spine. Interlace your fingers behind your head. Wrap the forearms in towards the temples. Lift your head up. You'll feel some spaciousness run through the spine. And you can either hold it center or explore some twists. And once you feel satisfied there, lower the head down. Again, chin below the forehead, neck is long. Find your preference, either backs of the hands taking rest on the ground, or take a bend into the elbows and bring hands to rest on the abdomen. By the benefit of hands on the abdomen, it will encourage the breath to flow there. But please be honest with how you're feeling. If that doesn't feel easy, bring backs of hands to rest on the ground instead. If there's anything that feels distracting to you, check in with your watches, your jewelry, any hair ties, whether they're on your wrist or in your hair, and even glasses on your face. If you find these things to be stimulating to your mind, just take a few extra seconds and set them off to either the right or left sides of your space. And then gradually allowing your movements, your adjustments to be, become smaller and smaller. Less and less. And ultimately you let go of the process of moving so that you can begin to receive stillness. It's in the still point. You begin to tune in to the world around you. The sounds of our Sunday evening. Tuning in to the sounds in your home. Allowing your ability to hear, to trail outside of your home. And 
any sounds of the weather or traffic. Simply receiving it all without blindly reacting to any one thing. And during this time, there is no right or wrong. Rather, the middle. There is no right or wrong doing. You're simply being in the present moment. A rather lovely place to be. Surrounded by your present moment. this sense of spaciousness as the head, the heart, and the body are gathering in the same place. The head, the heart, and the body gathering in the present moment. As a collective, we begin to streamline the focus. Following the inhalation and the way in which it expands your torso. And following your exhalation. And it's perfect contrast the way in which it softens your torso. And you breathe in through the nostrils. Follow it down your center column as it expands your navel. Once you feel fullness and richness at the top, your exhale softens your navel, rides back up the center column, and kindly departs to the nostrils. You take the time to become familiar. Nostrils down center column to navel. Navel back up the center column to the nostrils. this loop of your breath, nostrils to navel, navel to nostrils, And when you know 
notice that your mind is wandering off, insisting for something different, wandering through a fantasy land. You bring the mind back to the task at hand, breathing from the nostrils down to the navel, navel back up to the nostrils. Refine the breath slightly, navigating through sama, vritti, pranayama, or the same breath in as the same breath out. Feel free to link up with my counts as it is appropriate for you. Let's cleanse the exhalation together to begin, smooth and steady in through the nose. Open mouth. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Pause. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Pause. Inhale, four, three, two, one, pause, exhale, one, two, three, four, pause, inhale, four, three, two, one, pause, exhale, one, two, three, four, pause, inhale, four, three, two, one, pause, exhale, one, two, three, four, pause, inhale, four, three, Two, one, pause, exhale, one, two, three, four, pause. Continue on at your own rhythm. If you found that at all strenuous, please lower the count to a two or three. Based on your lungs' capacity, capacity, if it was incredibly accessible, bump it up to a five or six. All that matters is that you are breathing in and out with the same length of time.
eventually you'll find that the numbers, they melt away. And you simply trust that you are breathing in balance. But know that you can always come back to this tool of the breath. Counting your inhalation, matching your exhalation. Utilizing the breath work as a means to energize your present moment. And building on the awareness of the breath and take an abbreviated body scan that hasn't naturally happened become heavy through your feet, your calves, your thighs become heavy through your hands, your elbows, and your shoulders become heavy through the arms and the legs. Become heavy through the abdomen, through the chest, and through the entire length of your torso. Heaviness in the limbs, heaviness in your spine. Heaviness all the way through the neck and the head. Heaviness from the crown of your head to the pads of your fingers. Heaviness from the pads of the fingers to the tips of the toes. Heaviness from the tips of the toes to the pads of the fingers. Heaviness from the pads of the fingers to the crown of your head. Heaviness. 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 Through the entire length of your body, there is heaviness as you are melting into the floor beneath you. Trusting that you are safe, that you are supported. Heaviness in the physical body. Balance in the breath. Steady and center in the mind. The final chapter of our opening meditation, we arrive at our sankalpa or intention. I can't see that. I should flip the camera. Oh, excuse me? I should flip the camera real quick because it's sideways on the screen. Okay. intention, I'll be sharing with you a reading from one of my favorite books, Meditations from the Mat. 
Day 20. Free from all thoughts of I and mine, that man finds utter peace. Bhagavad Gita. As we begin to live the yamas and niyamas, we make a joyful discovery. Having anticipated an onerous set of challenges and the not too distant prospect of failure, we arrive instead at an ancient truth that to live according to these precepts is actually a relief. We realize that in fact these restraints and observances are in keeping with our own true nature. We humans are meant to live in harmony and the yamas and niyamas are simply a means to foster internal and external balance in our lives. After writing an essay about ahimsa, which is non-harming, it asks us to embrace non-violence at the level of speech, thought, and action. I went to my local Whole Foods store I am a daily customer and many of my students shop there as well. So I usually spend a good deal of time chatting with people I know. With the notion of non-harming so fresh in my mind, I found myself talking to people at the checkout line that I did not know. The impulse to reach out came from the spiritual injunction at the heart of Ahimsa, that we should not draw lines around ourselves, and that we should see all beings as our brothers and sisters. To my surprise that morning, I discovered that I enjoyed talking to strangers, at least as much as I enjoyed talking to my friends and students. Upon reflection, I realized that it was my own fear of rejection and my fear of others' judgments of me that held me back from making this a regular practice. Many times I had experienced the joy and magic of connecting to strangers, but creating such connections had not become a habit because of my own fear. As I've come to understand the true meaning of ahimsa, I've also found more connection with my own world. With relief, I've begun to let go of my fear of other people. My fear of strangers has been an aspect of suffering in my life, and this yama challenges me to get over it. Our suffering is a reflection of imbalance and delusion. The yamas and niyamas bring us out of delusion into clarity and balance. And with balance comes utter peace and the joy we seek. And with balance comes utter peace and the joy we seek. One more time, allowing it to sink in, and with balance comes utter peace and the joy we seek. It's taking a few moments on your own, allowing that to sink in. You feel that in the body infused by the breath and centered in the mind. No 
You begin to deliver small movements through your fingers, brushing the thumbprints against the remaining index fingers, middle fingers, your ring fingers, and pinky fingers. Bring life into the palms of the hands as you layer on changes through the toes and the feet. As you are ready, explore a full body stretch. The arms go long and the legs go long in opposition. Feel the shoulders shrug up into the ears and your legs elongate out in front of you. And from all of the spaciousness in the physical body, feel lightness as you hug the knees up into the heart, apanasana. You can hold still or take a little cradle. You might enjoy sending the legs in some small circles. If you're doing anything asymmetrical, be sure to take that in the opposite direction, smooth and slow. And we'll stay reclined on the back for our next posture. The only thing that you'll need in addition to the blanket, which is patting your neck and your head, and the bolster can stay out in front of you. Grab for one of your blocks. Bring a bend into the knees as we prepare for Setu Bandhasana, our supported bridge pose. The block in hand, lift your hips and slide the single block just beneath your sacrum, so flat triangular bone where spine meets your pelvis. Generally speaking, first or second setting on the block is perfect, but if it is safe, appropriate, and restorative on your body to go for third height, then by all means take care of yourself and find the highest of the three. A couple of variations that you can explore. Sticking with bent knees and feet stable on the bolster, that would be option one. Option two, you can extend the legs long, and this does two things for the physical body, it lengthens up the hip flexors, and will deepen the back bend. So if you find that it's painful or uncomfortable, just bring a bend back into your knees. Then option three is the inversion. So mimicking the shape of, say, legs up the wall, but without the support of the wall, Extend your legs up and allow the blood to flow in the opposite direction. For me today, I'm going to stay in supported bridge, the traditional expression of the posture. If you'd like, coming back to the blanket for over top of the body, you can keep that folded. That way it's a little more weight based or you can unfold it for more warmth from the feet all the way through the chest. Do a little shimmy of the shoulders. Let the shoulder blades prop up the heart. And then feel the backs of the hands, your knuckles, rest on the texture of your floor. And once you feel satisfied with all of those movements, we do the same thing, letting go of the process of moving so that we can return to our still point. If you'd like to join me in a cleansing exhalation to help settle the energy within you, as well as the energy in your space, take your time as you breathe in. And open mouth, let it go. You want to give your body time to adjust and to acclimate with our first pose, a supported bend in your back. As the body starts to settle and come back to that felt experience of heaviness, and you return back to the tool of your breath. This loop from the nostrils down to the navel. Navel back up to the nostrils. And so we move through the rest of our postures this evening. I will be leaving you with a little more time and silence. This way you can practice your reflection. Whether it's scanning through the body or cultivating a balanced breath. Or meditating on our collective intention of a hymn non-harming, non-violent, for our thoughts, our speech, and action.
be heaviness in the feet, the hands, and the head. Heaviness. 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 Fluctuation of your breath. Send a signal to the brain and through the body that you'll be moving momentarily. Breathing in. Those of you that would like more time and supported bridge pose, you stay for as long or as little as you'd like. If you are ready to move on, you'll bring a bend back into your knees if that is not already there. Once you're stable on the feet, press into your heels, tilt your pelvis up, and slide the single block out from beneath you. Lowering down one vertebra at a time. And once your tailbone touches your mat, we decide a couple of options full body stretching, supine pentacle, a big star on the back. And you might hug the knees into the chest, coming back to that little cradling action, sway to the right and to the left. If you'd prefer some dynamic movement, hug knees to chest, hands on the knees. Your inhale, lengthen your legs up, and with your exhale, bend it to the knees. You can do that a couple of times. Inhale, lengthen. With exhale, shorten. One more time if you're with me, in breath. And out breath. And we'll take one more series on the back body. Again, the blanket can stay as it is, and your bolster can stay as it is out in front of you. You'll now grab for your strap. If you don't have a strap, using your t-shirt or your towel, whatever you have accessible. And begin with the right leg. Secure your right foot, whether it's across the ball mounds, the arch, or across the heel, wherever you personally feel most stable. Then extending your right leg up towards your ceiling. Slide your hands down the length so that your elbows and triceps touch the ground or get anywhere near the ground. From there, you'll take both of the straps into your right hand. For me, I like to wrap the strap around my hands once. For you, it might be a second or even a third time. Then allow the right leg to open over to the right. Check on the left leg. You can keep your left knee bent, left foot on the ground or on the bolster. If it's appropriate, you can explore extending your left leg long. And I know this expression of hip opening and lengthening right inner thigh this is a little more active through the right hand, arm, and shoulder, so we will not hold nearly as long, just about two minutes. With that being said, if you find that you're white knuckling with the right hand, please soften and only use the effort needed to sustain and hold the pose. If you find your left butt cheek is beginning to roll way up off of the ground, less is more. So anchor your left sitting bone and lift your right leg up a couple of inches or a couple of feet, whatever it is that you need. 
Let your gaze become steady on the ceiling, and then ultimately closing the eyes. And soften your right upper arm and your right elbow. You might rest that on the ground or rest it on a block for a little more height. Checking in with a few points, unclenching the jaw and softening your eyebrows. And just begin to lose the breath, allowing the prana, the energy to move. Nostrils to navel, navel to nostril. And at this point, we are halfway through our supported hand to big toe pose. Recall that your head, your heart, and your body are gathering in the same place in your present moment, in your practice. And slowly draw the right leg back up to your center line. Guide both straps into the left hand. We'll do a brief twist to counter that. Your right leg crosses all the way over to the left side of your space. Once your right leg touches the ground, pressing into the outer edge of your left foot or your left leg to scoop your left hip beneath your right. Then you decide either the right hand can rest on your right ribs or take a little more spaciousness. The right arm opens. And you create a big capital T from fingertip to fingertip. If the right arm is open, the option to send the gaze over to the right. But if that doesn't feel good on the neck, keep the gaze steady on the ceiling. Just take about 60 seconds here. Check in with your glutes specifically. If they're gripping and resisting, soften. Let your legs come back to the heaviness. Your feet and your hands find heaviness. Your head find heaviness. One more round of conscious breathing. With your inhale, guide your right leg back up through center. Bend into your right knee and free your right foot from the strap or your t-shirt or your towel. And press into your right foot, level your hips and your back into center. Take a few rounds of breath in Shavasana. Just to observe the changes from the right leg through the left. And it's worth noting whether the sensation through your right leg is a little more concentrated or widespread. Before we move on to second side, be sure that the blanket is still patting the neck and the head and you're comfortable. You'll grab for the strap and secure your left foot, recall whether it's across the ball mounds, the arch, or your heel, and extending your left leg up towards the ceiling. Let the strap get longer, the triceps and elbows tap down to the floor, and we'll take both of the straps into the left hand. 
Once you have that in the left hand, guide your left leg any degree over to the left. If you need more support, remember that you can wrap the strap up the left palm once, twice, or a third time. If you find that your right butt cheek is coming way up off of the ground, anchor your right sitting bone into the floor. Your right hand can rest on your right hip point or let the back of your right hand flop outwards to the right side of your space. Steady the gaze on something above you and then slowly let your eyes close. If you find unnecessary efforts through the left hand or left shoulder, soften. If you'd like a little more support, remember that you can take your block underneath your left elbow, tricep, or let the left elbow rest on the ground. It's about two minutes here. Once you find that the framework of your body has acclimated, start to move the breath up and down the center column of your body, nostrils to the navel, and the navel to the nostrils. Just breath, the opening of your left hip. Inhale, draw your left leg up through center, taking both of the straps or your towel into the right hand, then guiding your left leg all the way over to the right. The strap becomes as long as you need it to so that you can scoot your right hip under your left and your left foot touches down to the ground. Left hand can rest on your left rib cage or open up the arms, big capital T, fingertip to fingertip. If you've elected to open up the left arm, option to send the gaze over to the left only if that feels comfortable on the neck. Just about a minute here, again relaxing through your right glute all the way down to your right toes. You maximize the experience of ease, minimizing any lingering efforts. Anchor the mind into the balance of your breath. One more cycle. With kindness, draw your left leg back up to center. Take a deep bend in your left knee and begin set your strap off to the side. Press into the sole of your left foot and scoot your hips back to center. Taking a symmetrical pose, you can have the knees to the chest, outstretch into Shavasana or that supine pentacle. Whatever would feel best, taking five. 
here, four, three, two, and one. Drawing the knees into your chest if they're not already there. Roll all the way over to your left side. Take a fetal pose. Then keeping the belly soft, extend your top leg long and press your top hand into the floor. You roll up the shoulders, feel the lift of the neck, and then finally up through the crown of your head. Our forward fold today will take Baddha Konasana, bound angle, so utilizing the spaciousness, the open quality that we created in the hips. You'll take one of your blankets, fold that up, and slide that just beneath your sitting bones, that we have a little more lift. And soles of the feet together, let your knees splay wide. Self-study, if you like a shorter stance or a wider stance. For me, when I'm taking a restorative practice, I like a much wider stance, but find what works for you. And then our second blanket, this is what I like to call the ankle scarf. You'll unfold it so you have a decent amount of material to work with. I let it drape over the arches in my ankles. I'll lift the knees up and then wrap the blanket around the backs of my ankles and my calves. So then it's warmth, but then it's also more support for the opening of your hips. And then either towering your blocks, this would be option one, allowing the head to rest. If it's not super comfortable to let your head rest on the two blocks, you can also do blocks and bolsters. You can let your head take rest on the bolster. If you find that it's not super comfortable to breathe, you can also rest the temple, cheek, or ear. If you find what works for head, bolsters, blocks, a comfortable resting point for the forehead, ultimately. Natural curl runs through the fingers and let the shoulders shimmy down and out of your ears. Then through the duration of this forward fold, I'd like you to explore sending your breath into the back body. So not only breathing into the belly and the ribs and the chest, but sending the breath into the lumbar spine, the back ribs and shoulders.
take a deep breath in. And let all your breath out. Be careful of the props that are supporting your head. Slowly articulate your spine and again lifting up to the shoulders, lift to the neck, and the head is the last thing to lift. Once you're upright and the heart space is open, get rid of the ankle scarf. You can set that off to the side. Take a comfortable seat. If you need to do a quick shake out of the legs or a little windshield wiper, some dynamic movement, take your time. And then so the spine has the opportunity to move in six directions. And we'll do a brief side body stretching. So anchor into the sitting bones, Sukhasana, ankles crossed, or Dandasana, let your legs extend long out in front of you. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, upward hands. With the exhale, release your right hand to the ground and bow out your left side body. You find a gaze that's helpful looking down. It's a nice stretch for the neck. Look forward that softest, or looking upward. Another opportunity to stretch to the neck. Hang with me and breathe for three. Allowing the prana to move up and down the length of your left side for two. And one, inhale, upward arms. With the exhale, release your hands to the floor. To those of you that have Sukhasana, just quickly change out. Opposite foot and ankle finds the front. And second side, inhale, upward arms, lengthen and lift out of your waist. Exhale, release over to the left and bow out your right side body. Once you've settled into the length, your right fingers, right arm, assess your neck, looking down, gazing forward or gazing upward. Here's your three. Soft to the shoulders, long on the neck. Here's your two. And one. Inhale, rise up. Flip your palms and exhale, releasing fingertips to the floor. And our last pose today to counter that forward fold, we'll take supported Tadasana. With supported Tadasana, again, taking your bolster or your pillow, place that out in front of you widthwise. Then we'll have our two blocks. Now the block height, it's very important, so listen carefully. You'll take your first block low and wide, and this will brace your shoulder blades. About six to eight inches away from that, I'm taking my second block and upping that to second height. So first height for the shoulder blades, second height for the skull. If you're familiar with the posture, or you just know that you'd like a deeper back bend, you go second height for the shoulder blades and third height for the head. Again, they progressively get higher. Just know that you do have choices to be made. I'm going to opt for the lower of the two, but you find what works in your body. Then blankets, placing them over top. I'm going to do one over the hips and then another over the feet. Once you lie down onto the back, Again, shoulder blades just beneath the chest. And then second block underneath the skull. It is not at all on the neck. Elbows, forearms, and the backs of the hands take rest on the floor. Feel your heels grounding your sitting bones, your knuckles. And then melting the back body, shoulder blades, skull and the hamstrings and the knees. There's quite a bit of contrast from the forward fold. It's now the heart being open, courageous. Staying enough to soften your gaze. And surrender into the simplicity of our present moment. There's no separation, rather divine connection. It's divine connection between the head 
car and the body. Gathering in the same place. Same place. in support of Tadasana where you currently are. Please stay. You do not have to move if you do not want to. To those of you that prefer to close practice more traditionally in support of Shavasana, you'll bring a bend into your knees, get stable to your feet. You'll roll over to either side, close your chest, then press into your top hand, You'll remove those two blocks, set them off to the sides of your space. Just be gentle and slow with your transition. And we'll take one of our blankets again to pad the neck and the head. If you would like a little more, say, stability to the neck and the head padding, when you are climbing down to your back, you take the bottom corners, the outer edges, and you start to roll them inwards. And this will create what I like to call a head hug. And you just find more comfort all together. Again, grabbing the bottom corners and the outer edges and you roll them in and in, in towards the center. And that way your head isn't so inclined to rock to the right or to the left, just in case you do begin to doze off and find a rest. Traditionally in Shavasana, again, backs of hands to mat. Outer shoulders soften downward. Feet are about hips width distance. The heels are grounded in the feet. The toes just floppy and heavy. And we'll take three cleansing exhalations to support the surrender, the softness, the final shavasana. Together we breathe in deeply. Open mouth. Two more breathing in. Open mouth. And the last one is all yours.
the same place. The precious, present moment. And I'll ask that you stay just as you are in the shape of your final shavasana for just a few more moments as I share with you the same reading that I offered in our opening meditation. Day 20. Free from all thoughts of I and mine, that man finds utter peace. As we begin to live the yamas and the niyamas, we make a joyful discovery. Having anticipated an onerous set of challenges and the not too distant prospect of failure, we arrive instead at an ancient truth and that to live according to these precepts is actually a relief. We realize that in fact these restraints and observances are keeping with our own nature. We humans are meant to live in harmony and the yamas and niyamas are simply a means to foster internal and external balance in our lives. After writing an essay about ahimsa, non-harming, which asks us to embrace non-violence at the level of speech, thought, and actions, I went to my local Whole Foods store. I am a daily customer, and many of my students shop there as well. So I usually spend a good deal of time chatting with people I know. With the notion of non-harming so fresh in my mind, though, I found myself talking to people in the checkout line I did not know. The impulse to reach out came from the spiritual injunction at the heart of Ahimsa, that we should not draw lines around ourselves, and that we should see all beings as our brothers and sisters. To my surprise, that morning I discovered that I enjoyed talking to strangers at least as much as I enjoyed talking to my friends and students. Upon reflection, I realized that it was my own fear of rejection and my fear of others' judgment of me that held me back from making this a regular practice. Many times I had experienced the joy and magic of connecting to strangers but creating such connections had not become a habit because of my own fear. As I've come to understand the true meaning of ahimsa, I've also found more connection with my world. With relief, I've begun to let go of my fear of other people. My fear of strangers has been an aspect of suffering in my life. And this yama challenges me to get over it. Our suffering is a reflection of imbalance and delusion. The yamas and niyamas bring us out of delusion into clarity and balance. And with balance comes utter peace and the joy we seek. Take a slow and deep breath in, and a slower, softer breath out. If you would like more time and final rest, please stay as you are and simply listen. If you are ready to be guided out of your final rest, there's no blind action, rather conscious deliberate change. There's lightness that moves through your tongue and fingertips. Lightness through the toes. And you allow this new wave of free-flowing prana to take you into a full body stretch. Arms slow one way and legs slow the other way. As if you were moving through honey, 
you can take your time hugging knees sweetly into your heart. And then rolling over to your left side, fetal pose. Just a little pause in gratitude. Pause in gratitude for your practice and this space that we call home. Take your time enjoying the upright in a comfortable seat. If comfort entails height, whether it's a bolster or a block, let your sitting bones settle. And using your skill set of body awareness, ears above shoulders, shoulders roll back and stack above your hips. You can feel the energetic lift and lightness. We're no longer in the heaviness, but there's lightness in your heart. Collect your hands there and Anjali Mudra for her palms. And one more time, we cleanse the exhalation to share the vibration of our intention of Ahimsa, the vibration of our personal efforts this evening. From the bottom of your belly, deep breath in. Open mouth. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be safe. May all beings know peace and walk through this life with ease. And my hope for you is that your practice is continuous, your heart steady, and your mind calm. With so much love and gratitude to each and every one of you, we close our evening restorative practice with a collective bow. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Again, my name is Caitlin, and it was truly my pleasure to guide you through this evening's practice. And one more thing just before we sign off, the book that I did the reading from this evening, it's called Meditations from the Mat. Daily Reflections on the Path of Yoga. This was written by Wolf Gates and Katrina Kennison. This is super lovely in terms of literature if you are looking for a daily read. That's all that I have for you this evening. Again, thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you guys soon. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Have a good one.